Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. When we get to a certain age, approximately 40, many of us need reading glasses just to bring the print just a little bit closer. Now the problem is that they're never where you need them. And so you just wind up laying them down and you sit on them, crush them, whatever else. Uh, and so here's the solution to the problem. Saw this initially from uh, Miguel Sanchez. I thought I'd make one as a segment, segmented piece. So this is a decorative container for your reading glasses. It's basically a segmented box in which you can have several reading glasses around the house. Decorative container so that you know what they are and then when you need them, put them on and you're way off and running. Perfect gift for almost anyone. So let's make a reading glass container or high glass box. First comes the plan. In this case the shape is simple but I spent some time designing different segment patterns in SketchUp. In the end I decided on a fairly simple stack pattern. I'll use eight segments in each ring of maple and insert small pieces of paduk between the segments. It is a good thing I chose the simple plan because I also changed my miter saw setup and could not get the saw to cut an exact 22 and a half degree angle. Consequently, my rings were more oval and the paduk segments are not lining up as they should. I cut 80 trapezoidal segments of maple, 8 trapezoidal segments of paduk, and 80 short grain slices of paduk and glued them all up into 11 rings. Then I sanded one face flat. Another reason I like tight bond original extend glue for these segment rings is that it does not gum up when I sand it. Since the case is so deep, I decided to do the hollowing as I built up each segment ring. I glued two rings onto individual wood face plates with normal glue. I'll build the rings from both the top and the bottom towards the middle, layer by layer. First is some special attention to the top and bottom. I'm drilling out the very middle of the ring since the paduk pieces don't line up anyway. Then I'll turn that paduk plug for the top and bottom segments and glue them in place. As soon as the glue sets enough to remove the timber from the lathe, I'm swapping over to the other end on the other faceplate. With this segment prepared, I'll true it up again, then glue on another ring. Then layer by layer, follow the same process. First trim the circumference of the last ring, next trim the face just a little, then drill out the top ring with the Forstner bit. My largest bit is 1 and 3 8 inch, but I need 1 and 3 quarter inch opening, so I'll ream out each segment and test it with a 1 and 3 quarter inch plug I turned. The interior will vary a little as I build the case. I'm not going for perfection. Finally, I'll flatten the top and glue on the next ring. Rinse and repeat again and again until I have completed both the top and bottom sections of the case. Now for the box portion. With solid wood, I'd have to part the blank in two and hollow the top and bottom. With segmented and the way I built the blank, that part is already done. This project is simple, but even in more complex projects, building layer by layer gives opportunities to hollow while the area is still shallow. I'll start with the top portion and cut a mortise in the paddock ring. With a carbide cutter, this goes quickly. The only real concern is that the sides are perfectly parallel. Then switch over to the bottom portion to cut the tenon. 
I plan to put the base of the tenon at the top of the next ring down. The only purpose for the top ring is to provide the tenon. So first I'm wasting off about one half of the top ring. With the base as tall as it is, I'm getting a lot of vibration on the small lathe. I'll have to go very gradually. After wasting most of the ring, I'm down to the serious business of sizing the tenon. I'm using a square carbide cutter to sneak up on the fit. I don't want a vacuum fit. This is for my wife. She wants to easily lift the lid off. If this were for another wood turner, I'd have to have a vacuum fit. With the tenon fitted, I'll put the bottom portion back on the lathe and put the top on using the joint and bring the tailstock up to support the lid. I'll keep the faceplate on the top portion while I shape the container in case I need to remount it for any reason. I'm taping the joint to provide some additional temporary tightness and rigidity and I'm using a gouge for the body. I'm aiming for a flare from the middle to the base and a flare from the middle to the top. I parted off some of the paddock ring earlier to make it more narrow. It will now form a bead at the joint between the top and the bottom. This is all face grain to the, due to the segmentation which makes for fairly easy turning. With the body complete, I'm parting off the top from its faceplate. Next, I've mounted the top onto a four-jaw chuck in expansion mode into the mortise in the top. I've taken care to wrap the jaws with some tape to protect the sides of the mortise. I'm forming an OG curve on the top and with the paddock plug becoming a raised top button feature. Then, sand and finish the top. I'm using a mix of beeswax and mineral oil. Not much more to do on the bottom, so I'm parting it off the, its faceplate. I don't want it a full ring thick, so I'm leaving about one quarter inch on the faceplate. Now I've mounted the base onto a four jaw chuck in compression mode again and padded the jaws with a little tape. I want to relieve the base just a little and add just a little decoration. I'll put a V groove near the outer rim and at the border of the paddock. Since there is a change in grain direction with the paddock, it will be difficult to have a completely smooth joint. The V-groove hides this very nicely. Now it is complete. I don't like the variability in the thin paddock pieces resulting from oblong rings coming from the miter saw setup. I'll have to spend some quality time tuning up the jigging for this new miter saw setup. But overall, I like the form and the finish. My problem now is that my wife has ordered four more reading class containers for different rooms in our home. Please click the like button on this video and subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield unless you feel a big bloody gash will improve your looks. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns.